this week as I was reviewing the portfolio and looking for opportunities coming into this week, I noticed a, a pretty popular pattern on the S&P 500. And so I started to look around and see what other people were saying about it. And I quickly realized why I typically don't do that. And so there are three main reasons why you should do your own research and not put so much weight into someone else's opinions about the stock market. There are three main reasons. The first reason is time frame. People have different time frames. If you if you are investing in a shorter time frame, a, a let's say a very short time frame in five minute increments day trading, your decisions are made a lot differently than someone who has a time frame of three years from now or five years from now or 10 years from now or 20 or whatever the case may be or daily it's a big difference so time frames are important and why you have to have the same time frame is the person that you're getting the opinion from if you're going to rely on their opinion the second the second thing is is position management so you you have to manage the position when you have it. You, you're going to, you're going to sell it at some point. You're going to buy more at some point. What are you going to do? Maybe you're going to sell half of it. Maybe you're going to sell a third. There are a lot of decisions that go into that. And so typically when I see opinions about the market, they don't really say anything about how to manage the position once you get into it. And that is very, very important. The third reason why is psychology. Investor psychology is important. You can have the best plans, but if you can't stick to the plans because of your emotional well-being, they're useless. You have to have plans that psychologically and philosophically, they match you. If you don't, if that doesn't happen, you will never be able to stick with the plans. So for those three reasons, the time frame, the management of the position and your investor psychology, take your own opinions, manage your own trading plans, create your own trading plans, manage them accordingly. That's why, that's why you should really be uh, careful when looking or considering anybody else's opinions. And, the, and frankly, their opinions could be right or they could be wrong. It, it depends upon those three, those three items there. Let's look at that popular pattern that we see in the S&P 500 right now on a daily time frame. And here is a beautiful chart of the S&P 500. Each one of these vertical bars represents one day of trading and specifically they're called candles. It's just a type of uh, a way to uh, uh, view price action. So there are four keys here to the head and shoulder pattern. And that's the premise. That's the pattern that I referred to earlier. We've got a reverse. It's actually a reverse head and shoulder pattern. Uh, it is a reversal pattern whether it's to the upside or to the downside. So four key things to a head and shoulder pattern. Number one, you've got the left shoulder. Two, you've got the head right here. Three, the right shoulder. And then finally, you've got a neckline. Now many people will wait to trade this until it breaks the neckline. That is one way to do it. Another way is to anticipate it breaking the neckline, which would, uh, you, would have, you would be purchasing it in this range right here. And then you would have stops either below the right shoulder or below the head. Either one of those are reasonable, uh, reasonable put places to put the stop losses. If you've got a if you've got a a, a stop here, it is a lower probability, uh, but lower risk. And if you have it below here, it is a higher probability but higher risk. And so it really depends upon your trading objectives and your management of capital. Nonetheless very interesting pattern coming into this week a buy trigger was issued on friday there was a little bit of follow through uh, looks pretty good for the bulls coming into this week and so we'll see if they can continue to advance the s p 500 into the neckline break it and maybe even higher or will it fail that is the question coming into the week even though we had a buy trigger on the daily time frame on the S&P 500 and frankly many of the positions that we're in and that we're monitoring we're not going to take it and we did not take it and the reason being is because we're making weekly decisions and so we haven't seen the a buy signal or a buy trigger on the S&P 500 yet or the positions and so we're not going to take any action 
on the US equity part of the portfolio. Now, when it comes to the commodities, they were our position was down a little bit for the week. Now, we did see some buy signals in the commodities, but their trend is either down or sideways. The one we're in is sideways. So we're not going to take any action on that. We'd like to see a little bit more price action to the upside. So, of course, no international positions, so nothing to report there. We didn't adjust any stops up. Uh, we may adjust some up this week if we do get some positive price action. But right now we're going to keep them where they are. So we're, we're not, we don't plan on purchasing anything new this week, frankly, just because uh, same thing with the commodities, all the positions that do have buy or possible buy triggers coming into this week are in downtrends. So we're going to let those be, we're going to wait for that to turn around and then we'll start to get more involved in that kind of thing. So with that, happy Thanksgiving, have a great week. We're going to continue watching everything and continue to take action when it's necessary and have a great week. We'll talk to you next time.